Okay, well, it's March 19th today. Been a few days, I think, since I worked on this. Tried to get over this bad mistake here. It looks so ugly, but I'm gonna crack on and, you know, I'll try and make this face look nice. That can be the, you know, presentation face. This can be the B-side. Um, so I actually brought out a couple things. These are some Dalton points that, um, you know, are my inspiration for the one I'm making now. That's nice and stabbed into the plastic there. Okay. So, I don't think I ever showed these on video before, on YouTube. Maybe just on my Facebook channel or something, but I made this one for a contest uh, that was run by Ryan Gill of Hunt Primitive. I call this one my Two-Faced Dalton. It's Georgetown. Georgetown shirt from Texas, like the giveaway piece I'm working on, but you know, I got a nice flake that was kind of close to the cortex and the white, you know, the white bit close to the cortex was a really good quality. And I managed to get some nice flaking pattern across that, especially near the tip. And then the other face was just all the darker gray inside. And I got a somewhat decent flaking pattern on that. So anyways, I think two people won the contest, me and some other person. And you know, I'm, I regret it, but I never showed this anywhere. This, I got this two years ago. The contest was in February of 2020 right before the pandemic started. So when I got it in the mail, you know, by the time I had got it in the mail, everything had gone crazy and I wasn't really posting anything. So yeah, so it just kind of sat around for a couple of years. Anyways, this is a, a resin cast of the Dalton point or one of the Dalton points that Ryan used to kill a bison with. This is the, the information card that came with it. There's the bison. I think, I'm pretty sure what happened. He put one through the lungs at first, or maybe it was the heart first, and then, you know, it, I don't know. Yeah, I definitely, I watched the video for sure, but that was a while ago. I forget which one came first. It was probably through the lungs first, and then, you know, it slowed down and wasn't moving, but it was standing up, and then he put another one right through the heart, you know, with with these long atlatl darts. This guy's just amazing. Like, I can't believe what he what he's managed to do with with these prehistoric technologies something that I'm hoping to do in the future, maybe, one day. Anyways, I made this Dalton point for the, the contest, thinking that, you know, this was around the size of the one that he used, but this is the exact, you know, resin cast of it, and it is so much smaller than the one that I made. Like, I'll forever be amazed that, you know, this thing went straight through a bison and you know, hit the shoulder blade on the other side and didn't break at all. Like, probably you could still use that point. You know, maybe just a tiny little bit came off the tip that can be reworked really quickly and bam, got another killing tool. So these two are my inspiration. And this is the one that I've been working on. And you know, I, I forgot how small these were actually. You know, I was pretty sure <laughs> that the one that I had made was almost this length. So, you know, I've got, I've got a lot of wiggle room if I want to replicate the one I made. And I've got even more if I want to replicate the one Ryan made. At least this is the cast, you know, I'm pretty sure that it's a pretty accurate cast. Like you can see, you know, the exact pressure flaking patterns and the serrations that he put on it 
you know, we did the, the first round of flaking this way and made the serrations. And then he took notches out like that to, you know, make those serrations a little deeper, I think. And you can see, you know, it's not like perfectly flat everywhere. It's a little bit thinner here, you know, but it's just, just a thing of beauty, isn't it? You know, the, the purpose of this is function. You know, it was made to be a killing machine and it was made really well. That's a really fine point. You know, the original piece would have been really light. This is a little, little heavy probably to be fully functional. Anyways, you know, like it's crazy cause like I went through school, you know, where they taught or university anyways, where pretty much in undergrad you're taught like you pretty much need a huge Clovis point to to kill some megafauna, you know? But here's Ryan Gill in the year 2020 or 2019, whenever that was, taking down a bison with a small point, you know? Smaller than my finger. That's like the size of my pinky. So, yeah. This really inspired me when I received that in the mail and I won that contest and I probably didn't thank him properly because of the pandemic and everything, but thank you, Ryan, for this. I will always treasure it, and one day I'll try and make something like it and take down a big animal with it. I got a lot of a lot of work to do before then. So, anyways, I'll continue working this down. I think I'm just gonna pressure flake it at this point. I don't need to get it thinner. I just want to make it look nice. So, I'm just gonna pressure flake it, and it'll be kind of a longer Dalton. You know, I've got some wiggle room around the tip and the base to make it a bit shorter you know I'll probably end up bringing it up to here so that the ears can be down here and leave the tip the way it is so it'll be something like that in the end but that's pretty good I think okay I'm gonna probably not talk too much I'll just nap and I'll try and keep this on camera the whole time I haven't been doing super great at that unless I need to take a big flake off. Do this first. Yeah, there's the camera. It's a little hard to do it closer to the camera. You know, when I take a, a bigger flake, I usually do it down here, but I guess I can keep that on camera well enough for these smaller ones it's easier to do up here or it's easy enough to do up here yeah I guess I can't really get the Big, big flakes with this one. That was pretty good. Yeah, that worked out well enough. Maybe I can actually clean that up a little bit in the end. how I hold this thing well 
Oops. I slipped a little bit on that, but it still worked out. So pretty much from here on in, it's all pressure flaking, so I wouldn't be offended if nobody really watched these last couple videos, but, oh shoot, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to bring everybody's names out again, I have, I have everyone listed on a piece of paper, everyone who's entered the giveaway so far. Guess I'll bring it out for the next one. Number 10. Yeah, that's pretty fitting. This one's part 9. Trying not to, you know, squeeze this piece too much as I take those flakes off. Oops. I was going to try and show the high ridge on that one that got removed, but that worked out pretty nicely. I think I've been on screen, right?
think I got used to the this new pressure flaker. The way it you know bends. It's a little more elastic than the other one. Because it's more narrow for longer. Starting to look a little better at least. <laughs> I'll figure I'll make this another kind of long video, at least 30 minutes. You know, if anybody is going to be watching this pressure flaking. They might stick around for a little longer, but anyone else, you know, I wouldn't be offended if you didn't watch this one. I think I said that already. Really should take some indirect hits, but I can't, I can't risk this. You know, there's... That crack definitely runs into there a little bit more. That would be dangerous, so yep. Yeah. I'll just let it let it look however it looks. I switched pressure flakers because I need some bigger flakes out of this part.
see how much wider this flaker is. Biggest pressure flake I've taken in a while. How'd that go on there? Broke into a couple pieces, I think. Something like that. Not bad. I always sink into my chair, kind of slide back slightly as I work, I think. So I always end up going out of frame. That was a pretty good one too. Followed this ridge over here and also that one over there. Left a couple little thumbnails, but that's okay. There it goes, but that wasn't great. Should probably sharpen this pressure flicker up. I think the first, you know, some of those early, or some of those first flakes attempts to get that flake off, I think I need to shorten this anyways. Yeah, I think those created kind of started some some fracturing, but you know, nothing initiated. And then the flake I ended up getting wasn't as big as I wanted because of those.
Some Daltons almost have like a tiny little flute that goes up the middle. You know, that probably was done with pressure flaking, I think. Like some of these larger ones that I got down here, you know, if they went up the center after I've, you know, started these ears a little bit, I think that would be fairly authentic. I didn't really, or I wasn't really able to get, get that little flute from the one that I replicated a couple years ago that I showed earlier in this video. Um, but the point that Ryan made and Ryan Gill made and took down the bison with did you can see here, there's this one that went up there and some, you know, pretty nice thinning flakes that came in at, at the end of the sequence here. There's also a little bit of the, you know, the pitch or whatever hafted it into the, into the uh, atlatl dart shaft. Still a bit of that residue left over. And then on the other face, got quite a large flake couple side by side actually so yeah pretty sure that was done with pressure maybe there was an earlier one larger one taken with indirect earlier in the process you know right before these ears were finished or done probably anyways yeah I wasn't really able to get that too much I got a few pressure flakes that went up but they didn't really get too far so I'll try and do that this time all right well this video is getting a little long now so I should probably finish this one up soon fairly important flakes so I'm just going to dress up my pressure flaker a little bit. took 30 seconds or something maybe less try and get this big one first create a, a ridge for later ones to follow on camera yep Try and finish up 
these last few flakes out of the base and that'll be it for this part of the video series. Nice. That was a really good one. All right, I'm just gonna leave it, leave it at that. We got a lot more pressure flaking to do. I'm sure there's going to be another two parts to this, at least. I really like that, you know, double long flake pattern I took out of there. So that's looking a little better, but still terrible. The other face will be fairly nice. I like this long pressure flake I was able to take to almost the center. There's going to be a high spot here. It's, that's going to be the thickest spot, but... I might be able to get a tiny bit thinner. Maybe I can get some good flakes coming out this way. I don't know. We'll see. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.